So, uh, Dr. Mahesh, we had spoken a few weeks ago about some of the challenges you see in uh, the NICU when children present with uh, neonatal sepsis. So could you talk a little bit about what that problem so, is? Uh, I'm a pediatric cardiologist, basically. Uh, so I handle newborn babies, mostly either suspected to or confirmed to have some form of a congenital heart disease. That apart, there are hundreds of uh, neonatal ICUs all across our country, which deal with newborns with various kinds of morbidities, not just cardiac. It could be anything from prematurity, to low birth weight, mm. to um, respiratory distress syndromes of the newborn, or it could ev or it could be puerperal sepsis. The sepsis are which we attribute to a systemic infection, okay. as opposed to a localized infection. An example of a localized infection would be, say, a urinary tract infection, or a respiratory infection, or a middle ear infection, okay. or a new or an infection of the meninges or the brain. So a systemic sepsis is when the inf infection is pervasive mm -hmm. and usually it's a blood-borne infection and affects multiple systems in the body. Yeah. Uh, one of the major challenges that we face is diagnosing and managing newborn sepsis early enough to reduce mortality and morbidity emanating out of it. So what makes early detection so valuable? Uh, so as you can imagine, a newborn is a being which is just coming into the world, has not been exposed to pathogens or infections before. So the immune responses are not yet mature enough to uh, deal effectively with infections. Okay. So the morbidity and mortality associated with the newborn infection is considerably high. Okay. So um, uh, that makes it all the more important that we suspect uh, the infection early enough and are able to start appropriate therapy. Unlike uh, an older child or an adult who will, who will present with very specific signs of infection, say fever, etc. Sometimes the only things that you are able to observe in a newborn may be lethargy, being unable to feed, okay. not being the normal color, Mm -hmm. uh, the capillary refill coming down, mm -hmm. the skin not appearing its normal color or texture. So these are, and the baby breathing too fast mm -hmm. or having a faster heart rate, not being able to maintain the fluid balance in the body, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throwing subtle seizures. So these could all be signs which could indicate the presence of sepsis. Once you're able to suspect sepsis clinically, uh, oftentimes you would uh, tend to start an antibiotic empirically. When you start an antibiotic empirically, it's usually a broad spectrum antibiotic, which is meant to cover most of the organisms which you uh, think uh, might be the cause of the infection. Um, the only way that you uh, try to uh, prove or disprove your uh, premise of sepsis is by doing specific tests. So, the tests include uh, the basic blood uh, tests, which include the complete blood count, looking at the white cell count, the proportion of the polymorphs in the white cell counts, uh, looking at a peripheral smear, then uh, uh, looking at uh, um, uh, C-reactive protein, which are inflammatory, which is an inflammatory marker. So there are several inflammatory markers which you could look at, and uh, the gold standard, of course, is getting a blood culture. So the blood culture has to be taken in a very sterile fashion. Uh, usually, it, it, it's 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 a uh, it's done through a venipuncture, okay. in with all sterile precautions, and this blood is put into specialized bottles, which are then incubated and uh, for the growth of any organisms. And if any uh, bacterial organism is grown, then they go on to further do an antibiotic testing to identify the antibiotics that the organism would respond to. So this is all a time consuming process. Mm -hmm. So the blood culture typically takes between 48 to 72 hours okay. to really give a, a good report. 
uh, along with the sensitivity reports. Okay. Um, uh, so, so that's one of the main constraints. So till the time that you have a culture report in hand, mm -hmm. you are mainly relying on uh, on your clinical observation of the baby, and you're giving an, an, an empirical uh, an empirical antibiotic. Only once you have the the documented proof that there is indeed uh, a bacterial infection, bloodstream infection, and these are the antibiotics that will work against it. Mm -hmm. That's when this very specific directive therapy starts. Sometimes even uh, localized infections may be difficult to pick up mm -hmm. because the babies do not necessarily give out the signs and symptoms of a local infection. What you may see is a generalized lethargy. And, okay. uh, uh, so you may think of it as sepsis even when there might be a localized infection. So there is always that conflict and confusion while 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 treating. Uh, so some of the so if I paraphrase you, then some of the clinical signs that you might see for localized infections may be similar enough to sepsis. So distinguishing is also something of value. Yes, it is. So early detection but also early distinction, both would be of value. Yes. And the gold standard, again to just paraphrase you, up to 72 hours it can take. So when it when done right, it does give you a definitive response yes, yes. or a definitive result. But the issue is you're losing some three, two to three precious days in between. That's true. You're using a, uh, empirical judgment also to start the antibiotic therapies. Mm -hmm. um, any comments on that? You know, how have you seen that part of the discipline also change over the years? You know, in terms of what regime to start when? You know, are you looking at data that's more contextual to a particular region? Any kind of epidemiological piece also that's working in the background there? Uh, well, in most centers, the the data is uh, what is available as the recommendations. Of, of the respective associations of federations like the Neonatal Federation or the American Academy of Pediatrics. So okay. There are definite guidelines and recommendations for starting empirical antibiotic therapy. Okay. And that's what most of us follow. Mm -hmm. And at least in the Indian context, uh, there, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there isn't a robust enough, uh, very localized epidemiological data uh, okay. to really customize our own antibiotic therapy. So mm -hmm. the standard recommendations are what's followed for the medical therapy. Okay, got it. And of course, you have to put into context the the, the surrounding circumstances. For example, a, a delivery process which was very obviously at higher risk for infection, and then the baby having sepsis mm -hmm. versus a clean delivery and no uh, prenatal suspicion of infection, but then the baby developing an infection. Got subsequent it. to birth. Got it. Got so it. you've got to contextualize that when you uh, start antibiotic therapy. Okay. Great. Thank you for your time. Thank you.